Matt, I can see how the spikiness helps you understand fitting between all the packing spheres. Yeah. I don't see how the spikiness helps you reconcile actually getting outside the box. Yeah, yeah, therein lies the problem. Yeah, that, that's a very, very good point because it kind of solves one problem, but then you're thinking, but hang on, that it's still limited by the amount of space in the middle. And it turns out you get a lot more space when you go up in higher dimensions. And no one's surprised when we come back here, when I tell you that that diagonal distance there is root two, no one goes, oh, but that's bigger than one. And you go, well, of course, because if you go on the diagonal, you get more space. So instead of one that way, one that way, the diagonal is root two. And then over here, I say, oh, it's root three now, because you go across and across, and then you can go the other way, it gets a little bit longer. Every time you've got another direction you can go in, you get a little, the, the diagonal gets a little bit bigger. So the diagonals are buying you all the... Diagonals buy you a lot of space. And so while I keep saying the box is absolute, like it's still four in every direction, there are a lot of those directions. And so it has the amount of space in there because it's using the diagonal and every time another dimension, you get more diagonal. It's quite roomy, right? And so, you know, your void in there is bigger than your little circle there and that carries on. all. So kind of we should have seen it coming because the diagonal increases without bound. Why on earth shouldn't the sphere being held in place, limited by that diagonal, increase without bound? And a sphere is already more pointy than a circle. And people get very confused by this because, you know, a sphere is like the perfect example of a smooth, it's like it's, like it's the opposite of pointy, like it's the least pointy thing imaginable. But if we go um, back a couple dimensions, when we had, I every time I move that, I regret it immediately. When we had a circle, if you imagine starting in the middle of the circle and going all the way out to the outside of your circle, sphere, right, and then actually you stop uh, three quarters of the way out. You just leave the last quarter and you slice off that last quarter of the circle. That segment of the circle is around about 7.2% of the surface area. So by slicing off the final quarter of the radius, you remove 7.2% of the circle. If you do that for a sphere, here's our sphere, and again, you start in the middle, you go up towards the top, but this time you're removing this you know, that when you slice it off, you get this whole cap. This, again, it's a, it's a spherical segment. And that is the same point. That bit there is still three quarters of the way out. So uh, both of those I could label if I was being thorough as um, that's like R on four is that last little bit at the top that we're slicing off. In this case, when you slice that off, you're taking away only, that is four point, give or take 4.3% of the whole sphere. So a sphere is pointier than a circle. When you slice the same bit off, you get less of it. And then for a, the, you know, the three sphere, if you did a sphere in, in 4D and sliced the top off it, you'd get even less. And that carries all the way up to the point where for a higher dimensional sphere, if you slice off a quarter of the radius on the outside, you get nothing, right? It's such, well, you do get something, right? There's a tiny, tiny amount because now it's made of bits like, Imagine trying to describe a sphere to someone who's only ever seen a circle. It's like a circle, but, it, but it, it, it sticks out in every direction, right? So some of it's over there, some of it's over there, some of it's over there. And, and trying to comprehend that, it just, it, that just becomes terrible in higher dimensions. It's just little bits of it in every single direction. They go a long way, but they have very little, not volume, but stuff to them. So you slice off the outer quarter in every direction, and... Uh, and you don't get much at all. There you are. Never ends. Your, your center sphere gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And for those of you who are playing along at home, if you want the equation over here, as uh, you may have noticed, it equals, it's the square root of whatever dimension you're in, minus one. And D just races off. Its square root never stops going up either. And you're taking off a constant, right? So this, it never slows down. Fun bit of notation, mathematicians would actually call these balls, not spheres, because mathematically a sphere is just the outer shell. It's like the extreme points, whereas the ball is the solid, everything inside it. But of all the bits of mathematical terminology, I think mathematicians play fast and loose with ball and sphere. All mathematicians, as far as I'm aware, will call this a sphere. You get a number that is absolutely 
off the chart. Uh, it, uh, you couldn't write these numbers down. You, you'd run out of pens in the universe. Don't forget, just three three stacked together was 7.6 trillion. Now we've got a stack of three 7.6 trillion of them high. And the question is, why would you want to know, right? And so actually the reason we have arrow notation uh, is to look at very huge numbers.